Great to have you all here. This session is looking at um, the role of accounting in a digital world. And we are very lucky to be joined by Mike Day, um, who is from Zero, and he is the head of learning propositions. Um, so he's really going to be able to share with us some great insight into the role um, or accounting in a digital world operating within today's current environment. Um, so I trained to be an accountant a long time ago, um, many years ago, in fact. And when I started out, we didn't have computers. Everything was done manually. We had big red cash books that everything was written in. Um, and we would prepare the accounts manually. We didn't have spreadsheets. In fact, we had one computer shared across the entire office. So everything was manually prepared and um, our clients would turn up with a, a box or a carrier bag of records that we would be sorting through and we'd get to a point that the accounts were handwritten and then passed on to someone else who would type them up for us. Um, and we've come an awful long way since then. Operating in a finance role nowadays is very, very different to how it was when I first started out. The technology that we now have available, the systems and processes that we've now got are very different. Um, and Mike's going to be able to share some insights into that. Um, just in the chat box there, Amy has posted to everyone where the videos are available. So you will be able to go back and watch. Um, watch other sessions and the rest will be recorded throughout the week as well. So that's in the chat box there for you. We've got, um, so we're gonna have a session with Mike. He's going to share some insight with us. And at the end, we should have a bit of time for some questions. So if there is anything that you do want to post to Mike, pop it into the chat box and I'll pick up some of the questions if we've got enough time at the end. But, um, I think I will hand over to you, Mike. Okay, lovely. And uh, welcome everybody. Um, really good to spend some uh, some time with you. I'm just gonna uh, share my screen, first of all. Let's just do this and that. And can you see that okay? Yeah. Yeah, I got that. Lovely. So, um, yeah, my name's uh, Mike Day. Um, as uh, Chris was saying, I'm head of learning propositions, which basically means uh, zero for students. And so now uh, zero is available for students. So, um, and uh, my role is to drive that forward in the UK and uh, EMEA. Um, I'm going to be taking you through a session today that I call the changing shape of accounting and finance. It is about the technology shift. It's about the uh, advancements in technology but I'm also going to try and just stop from time to time and have a little bit of a chat around well so what um, what does this technology uh, change bring and um, what are the opportunities um, for uh, accountants and uh, trainee accountants so that's what it is it's um, changing shape of accounting and finance first off if you're not aware about zero um, Xero is a, a cloud accounting solution and all cloud accounting means if you've got a browser and a decent internet uh, then you're set to go. There's nothing installed anywhere except on our uh, own servers and so therefore it's any time, any place, anywhere, any device including iPhones and uh, Android um, phones but obviously um, I iPads and laptops etc and everything in between. So. Any time, any place, anywhere, any device really is the, the way to think about um, cloud accounting. And again, if you're not re really that aware of Xero just yet, um, we've kind of gotten very big, very quick. Uh, we've got uh, 2.75 million um, customers now in the world. And unusually, we were born in New Zealand, which is quite unusual for tech. But yeah, we're a New Zealand uh, based company. As you can see there, one of the interesting facts, I think you can see how just how fast growing Australia and New Zealand have been and actually that's because they um, pumped a lot of money into 
uh, broadband infrastructure about a decade ago. They were one of the leading uh, countries in um, in broadband. And then, hey, presto, no surprise, you know, cloud accounting has gone uh, very quickly there. Not so quickly in uh, North America, uh, which actually is almost the opposite. You might be um, surprised to hear that um, it's been slower in terms of take up of, of cloud, uh, cloud anything. So what I'm going to be taking you through in this session is, yes, there's the references to technology and um, to zero, uh, but it's kind of the so what that I'd like to have a chat with you about. The first thing is that um, one of the things over the last five years that uh, we've seen is a massive change in the banking industry. And um, to be fair to the UK government, um, they actually said around about five years ago, all UK based banks must by law open up their systems for integration with others. What's that's actually happened, that's called open banking. And uh, the UK leads the way in open banking technologies. And so um, all of these banks on the screen there, by law, have to communicate with other um, software vendors like Sage and Intuit and, uh, and Xero. Uh, and that's been very fast over the last five years. That's gone from uh, nearly nothing to all of them um, uh, integrating with software like um, Xero. What that means though, is that there's been a massive shift in automated bookkeeping. Because all those banks on those, that screen now provide what's called bank feeds, automatic bank feeds. And so if you're operating, for example, a florist or um, an architect, um, you're able to take your information from the bank every day if you want to, um, automatically. And then what um, has happened over the last five years, again, across cloud accounting, is a massive surge and take up in machine learning and artificial intelligence. I've been in this game for a long, 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 long time, and I've never seen it being quite as quick as this. Certainly over the last three years, nothing quite like it. And so what Xero does here is it takes the information from the bank automatically and it uses machine learning uh, to match those transactions and also attempt to code the transactions too. Same principle applies with the ability to take a picture of my train receipt or my pizza receipt. I can take a uh, picture of the train receipt and again, the machine learning kicks in and says, right, I'm going to read that receipt and it's clever enough to say that's clearly a train receipt with this much gross and this much VAT etc and therefore it says well I've seen that many many times and 99.99% .99 of the time it's been traveling expensive and so it takes that information gobbles it up and brings it into the system and also attempts to um, automate it. That goes even further with something in Xero called HubDoc that takes the principle further into all sorts of different transactions. So this is rather than the bank squirting data into the accounting software, this is the accounting software going to retrieve the data from places like, for example, Travis Perkins. So with Travis Perkins's um, blessing, uh, Zero goes and retrieves the Travis Perkins invoices, pulls them into the guts of the system and does the same thing and interprets the information that are in the invoices. Machine reads them basically, and machine learns them. Um, and that also applies to project costing. You might be learning project costing on your studies. Well, this is a, a really sophisticated project costing system because it brings all those materials and costs into the guts of the accounting software, but also it tries to actually match it all up. And it says, well, um, if I see the word timber, then generally I know what that means. So yes, there's been a massive movement in that um, uh, data retrieval type of technologies over these last um, three years. And what that really leads to is what we call code-free accounting. Now it's not code-free, of course, it's basically code automated. And um, what it does, it starts to learn about all those things and it says, right, NCP, I've seen that um, a thousand times and it stands for uh, national car parking and therefore I'll code it to car parks. So it's really starting to get to the world of um, 
if not zero data entry, massively lessened uh, data entry. Because that's really what computers are good at. That's really what machine learning is good at. Anything that's learnable and repeatable, um, we will all see over the next three to five years. If you can um, automate it, it's going to be automated. And that's the uh, advancements within machine learning uh, over these last few years. Also, um, as we, in terms of our accounting studies, you know, cash is king. Most businesses fail uh, because of cash flow rather than profit. And so um, uh, products like Xero have pretty sophisticated cash flow forecasting built into them these days. Um, lots and lots of uh, enabling tools uh, for the bookkeeping and the accounting. What you may not be um, aware of is just how well these systems also manage all sorts of files now. And so I can attach a file like a contract or a picture of a conservatory to pretty much any transaction within Xero. And so Xero becomes almost a document management system as well as an accounting system. Quite a powerful sort of hub of information and not just to do with uh, the financial side, but also to do with the commercial side as well. So what? The main message from this session with me today is the so what is um, just so positive. The so what in all of that that we've just been talking about is that um, I work with a lot of accountants. And what I, I see, what they tell me, is that um, yes, all of that upfront keying in and compliance type work, and coding type work, is massively reducing. But there's a correspondent shift towards uh, a word that you might come across um, quite a lot now, uh, which is advisory or advice. So accountants are getting more and more involved in advisory services. For every minute that's saved on that upfront work, there's a minute gained on adding value. And so there's a shift towards the roles and responsibilities in accounting. That's good news because that's what we train to be accountants to do. Um, we're very good at it. In fact, we're the most trusted advisor out of any advisor that the business works with. And again, you know, we have the information to prove that in terms of the feedback from those 2.75 million um, customers. They really value the accountant and they value the accountant uh, the most. That's largely then because of all this enabled technology and the ability to um, advise as well as interpret. Another huge topic that um, if you're training in accounting, uh, I'd, um, I'd really recommend you start to take a look at is the fact that um, all of these products like Sage and Intuit and Xero, they all have what's called an ecosystem. What it means is that Xero has more than a thousand companies who work around the edge of Xero, uh, creating technologies which are either specifically really good at what they do, like say, business intelligence and analytics, or um, chasing debts or inventory or manufacturing. Some of these companies are better at doing those things than Xero are. And they have applications which link with Xero for the financial bit. But there are also hundreds and hundreds which have specialized in what's called vertical apps or vertical niches. In other words, farming, hospitality, um, construction, um, coffee shops, car mechanics, you name it. There are applications now which really tightly integrate with the accounting system. And what that then means, the so what of that, is again, it's a positive message for you. Because what we're seeing um, out there in both practice and in industry is accountants getting really, really stuck into all of those extra business um, systems, business software and not just the accounting software, to such an extent that often some of the conversation with com companies is to do with the business first, i.e. as an accountant, I understand your world as a farmer first, and then I move into the conversations around the finances. And that's great for uh, accounting trainees because it's really interesting. It's a movement towards becoming quite hybrid um, hybrid in terms of understanding business processes, 
business systems, hybrid in terms of IT and all things technology, and of course, hybrid in terms of financial skills. And if you can combine those three, then basically you're onto a bit of a winner. The other topic to take you through is that um, Zero Hour has a really strong relationship with bookkeepers and accountants. So what um, you may not be aware of is that whenever anyone thinks of um, Zero, uh, then perhaps everyone thinks about, yeah, that's something that florists might use or a, a car mechanic or a, an architect. But actually there's as much software and technology for the practicing bookkeeping and accounting practice as there is for the what you know the client end, the customer end. And not many people realize that. So all to do with the management of the practice, uh, tax, um, statutory accounts, uh, there's a much, much technology going on at that end as there is at the customer end. Um, tools like find and recode, which will allow an accountant uh, to fix things. Um, so if what if the coding is gone wrong, um, then there are basically tools that can fix that. Not just in now, now and going forwards, but in history, which takes a bit of getting your brain around. As I mentioned, um, there's also statutory accounts and, and tax software. And the main thing I'm really talking about here is that I think one of the main um, uh, developments in accounting we're going to see over the next five years is the same adoption of all that technology, machine, machine learning, artificial intelligence, but in the world of the practicing accountant, in statutory accounts, in tax. And as can be seen on this particular screen, Vero can already start to warn uh, the company and their accountant that things aren't quite right. There, there are missing codes. The relationship between um, uh, what's about to be submitted in terms of profitability just doesn't look quite right. Likewise, um, you may come across a term called making touch digital, MTB. And um, that's very much automated these days in terms of uh, VAT returns. Uh, and to finish that bit off, um, Zero has been record an assurance dashboard. What the assurance dashboard does is it proactively shows um, auditing maps. Again, in your studies, you, you probably come across uh, the other term auditing, but um, auditing traditionally has been very, very, very after the event, even um, to the extent of doing audits at the end of a year, finding out that there's problems that happened at the start of a year. Um, whereas what a strong dashboard does is it takes that and flips it on its head. It starts to give the accountant indicators of things proactively. Um, and there are things in audit that you look out for. You look out for things like um, a supplier of multiple bank accounts or uh, just thresholds of transactions being too high. Um, <clears throat> the level of invoicing just has gone from hey, one hey, level hey. to another. And what the assurance dashboard can do is it can proactively show, show all of that in heat maps. And it's a really powerful tool for accountants. And so again, from a career point of view, the world of auditing has also changed for the better, in my opinion. Um, and again, it's an area that you might you know, like to consider in terms of a career path, because it's also now uh, jam packed full of technology too. <clears throat> The so what behind all that is um, if you have aspirations to work in practice, uh, bookkeeping or accounting, um, it's also a great time to be involved because um, the pace of change um, ha will be just as uh, fast as we've seen at the customer side, the organization or business side. So um, again, aspirationally, if you wanna get into working in practice, there's a lot happening in that space which is great and it's uh, it's very interesting another quick topic is that um you may again in your studies come across a term called uh, big data now all big data is it's kind of does what it says on the tin uh, it's a lot of data in one place but um the one thing to kind of um uh, appreciate if you like is that 
the cost of computing and the cost of um, storing data has crashed. It, it's got very, very, very cheap over these last few years, and it's going to get even more cheaper. So the ability to hold data in one place and the processing power of computers is going through the roof. So big data, here's a good example of big data, in my opinion. Um, zero is an exa example of big data, where imagine those 2.75 million customers, all of their data is actually in one place on Amazon Web Services. And therefore, we do something called Small Business Insights. And there's a link here um, that you can explore and take a look around. In these slides, by the way, which uh, you'll get anything that's in um, underlined like this means that you can just click on it and just have a bit of a play around really. Because what Small Business Insights does is in the case of the UK, um, it can do things like what's on the screen. It can say out of the um, 720,000 customers in the UK, what does all of their cash flow look like um, amalgamated? Uh, and uh, um, how long does it take for them to be paid? Are they hiring people? Are they trading overseas? And it's so powerful that even governments now are starting to get involved because nobody's ever seen data like that before. Not even the banks have data like that. So the accounting software providers, Zero, Sage, Intuit, Microsoft, uh, SAP, you know, there's, uh, there's lots of them. Um, they kind of are starting to hold the key to data that governments have not seen before. And so um, here's an example, unfortunately, of, of COVID, again in the UK, which shows that out of the, the 700,000 customers, unfortunately, the change in jobs you know, by geography. But that's an example of big data. It's amalgamated and you can sort of drill, then drill into it. So the florist can find out his or her gross profit margin but they can also find out what the gross profit margin is of, of florists using zero in the UK. And you can kind of see just how powerful that, that becomes when it's in the right hands, i.e. in the hands of the accountant. And one thing to really um, dwell on is, again, if you do some Googling and you look up artificial intelligence and machine learning and all those things, then it's inevitable that you'll start to see uh, the robots are coming. And the robots are coming and we're all doomed because everything's going to be automated. Um, if you're a dentist, then you might be all right. Uh, but if you're an accountant, uh, then you're just going to get replaced. Now, obviously, from the zero point of view, uh, we do lots and lots of studies on this and lots of um, research. And here's a good example that clearly shows that that, that just isn't the case. In fact, out of our um, accountants and bookkeepers, when we surveyed them, uh, and this was pre-COVID, this particular slide, but um, what's clear is that the more they automate and the more they go to cloud technologies, the more they recruit. Now that just sounds weird, doesn't it? In fact, it just sounds daft. How can I be saying one, one uh, sentence, yes, upfront keying in and coding and um, compliance work is decreasing and yet there is more employment in accounting and the simple reason is um, people uh, people get advice from people people um, are best at interpreting results analyzing results and in, in particular um, explaining results so more employment happens in accounting and not less and that's one of the messages for today from your career point of view. Accounting is a really exciting space and it's a growing space. It's actually a space that um, uh, it's good to get into from a career point of view. With or without you becoming an accountant, um, I started off as an accountant, but then I ended up doing all sorts of things. But I don't regret the accounting for, for a second, not even a second because that financial acumen that it gave me um, provided me with such a solid base. And so my Uncle Mike um, chat and Uncle Mike advice is you can't really go wrong with this subject. It provides you with a, 
one of the base, best bases of information and, and skill you can ever get. The best marketing directors I've ever worked with have come from a financial and accounting background, for example, because they know their onions, they know what makes businesses work, and they know what business that uh, makes businesses tick. So I wanted to share that with you to show you that um, there's an acceleration of employment in accounting. Um, that, that's for sure. The other thing to chat about is that um, we are seeing definitely um, new roles being born. This one in particular, I would keep an eye on if I was you, and it's called the virtual CFO or chief finance officer. This is somebody in practice or outside of practice in industry who have, who have through the enablement of all these technologies, um, provide financial officer work for multiple companies at once, all virtually all across the cloud. It's a new career path. I I've never seen anything like it. And um, we're seeing this sort of popping up all over the place, roles which are um, multiple company and uh, virtual. Likewise, we're seeing new companies being born uh, that we, we call cloud integrators. And again, this is that hybrid thing we were talking about. Um, these are companies who are real experts in technology, but they're also real experts in accounting and finance. Um, and they've kind of teamed up uh, within uh, the, the one company, and they're now providing services to customers, to uh, industry, which provide a one-stop shop in all things um, technology. Because to actually go digital is not just about the accounting software. It's about going digital with all of the business processes which are relevant, um, including some of the real fundamental things like staff communications, customer communications, etc. So going cloud is only partly to do with things like accounting software. And that's what these companies specialize in. Uh, and they do it very, very well. But it's also another career path uh, that you might want to think about if you have aspirations towards uh, financial skills, yes, but also understanding business better and understanding technologies better. Another thing I wanted to throw into this particular pot isn't really much to do with the accounting software, um, but it's, uh, it's a bit of an opinion, I must say, but um, <clears throat> watch out for the next uh, phase in telecommunications. You know, so we've all got our phones and you know, 4G and uh, etc. Um, obviously, 5G is just starting to, to bubble through. You know, why the hell am I talking about 6G when 5G has only just started? Well, that's because, for example, uh, the Chinese have just um, launched their first 6G um, satellites, and they, the significance of 6G I can't un, um, underestimate today. In the same way as 5G is maybe sort of 10 times faster than the old 4G. Um, this is at least 50 times faster than 5G. And that's a massive shift in how computers will be, will be used. That sounds a bit extreme, but I mean it. I think computers will go from being devices that we you know, carry around and everything into something quite different with this shift in technology. Uh, if some of you are uh, film fans and Minority Report and all that sort of thing. Um, we're not that far off from the days when um, computing will just be available anytime, any place, um, <clears throat> and it will be incredibly fast. So fast that we'll stop thinking about can I get the information, and we'll start thinking about I've got the information now. What do I do with it? Um, there's a major shift in computing coming. Is kind of the main message there. Um, and it's all due to just how fast uh, these uh, data communication networks are going to get relatively soon, uh, next three years, sort of thing, three to five years. So um, although uh, we pride ourselves in being very, very much at the format, forefront of the technology side of things, um, there's two big messages for me today. One is this one. Uh, the next big thing isn't the tech, it's not the AI, it's the people. You know, nothing really changes without people, um, and therefore 
people is the key to this change in technology. Yes, there is a massive shift in enabling technologies, but it's going to be the people that will make this um, sing or, or, or fail. Therefore, that's you. And it's you and your aspirations and your studies and um, you know, where you want to take this um, in your lives. Um, but the main message for me today is what a wonderful time to get into this space. It has never been this fast as, as we're seeing now. And that can bring with it its own um, apprehension. And you can sometimes maybe get a bit nervous about that. You know, the, the robots are coming and all those things. Um, but also on the other side of the coin, it's such a fabulous opportunity. Well, I can't stress that enough. So, <clears throat> so what is, um, you're in a good place. Um, you're uh, with a great provider, uh, First Intuition, and um, you're in a good place, um, you know, either thinking about or studying uh, finance and accounting. And so um, it's well worth the journey um, and all sorts of other new opportunities are being born uh, that you may not um, fully appreciate just yet. It doesn't have to be accounting. Uh, there are more things now uh, opening up. Um, accounting um, has become jam-packed full of technology and it's fast and it's dynamic and things are changing um, and it's challenging and all those things which reward us um, is what's happening in accounting just at the moment. We've got a lot of accountants and bookkeepers and we survey them a lot. And one of the things we did uh, last summer, um, so it's even a year out of date, is we asked them um, what skills do they now look for in an accountant when they're recruiting? Um, there's some uh, no surprises here and there's also some surprises. So the first one, uh, that came across um, quite obviously and very strongly data analytics but also the interpretation of data so um, uh, all things data analytics again if I was you I'd start to get my head into this this term data analytics digital transformation again that's what I was talking about where it's not just accounting software I'm talking about uh, digital transformation of every single business process you can think of going digital and also very often going cloud. And so the more you can get into that, uh, the better. And then um, some very, uh, you know, the, what we always always used to call softer skills, communication, um, written communication, verbal communication, um, the ability to present, you know, a bit like this, uh, presentation within meetings, presentation within amongst colleagues to customers, you know, all things presentation. Um, and because of the, that world I was talking about where there are a thousand uh, companies who link with Zero and Sage and Intuit, um, then business acumen is becoming uh, really important to the world of accounting, understanding how businesses work as well as the finances of businesses work, because that's what's happening due to those ecosystem of technologies. Accountants now go into conversations with uh, their company or with their clients with a, um, a different hat on. It, it's already happened. It's not happening. It's already happened. They go in with a hat on that says, and this is a whole suite of technologies uh, which is going to transform the whole business and not just the finances, all business processes. And then a couple of um, maybe curveballs but this came across um, pretty strongly back to us from accountants project management a very generic skill of course but um, if you can get into project management uh, that, that can only help and then a uh, leadership leadership of projects but also leadership of people um, again so what i'm really showing there there really is if you're thinking well what should my toolkit be uh, where should i go where should i strengthen where should i grow um, then the information I get back from accountants is that set of, uh, of skills on the screen. Okay, okay, so one of the things then working with uh, uh, First Intuition is um, for the first time, you can also get access to some of Xero's um, certifications and badges. 
And again, in the um, slide deck here, um, there are some links to this. The first certification you can uh, do uh, via first intuition is free of charge, and it's called the advisor certification. And if you just click on here, um, this landing page link here un underlined, it will take you through to a very simple landing page uh, called Zero Certified, uh, Zero Advisor Certification. If you scroll down and go to um, Start Learning, you can click on Create Zero Login, and that will land you in a registration page. And you choose, if you click on Organization, you choose First Intuition from that list of organizations. What that will then do is it will land you straight into the same e-learning pack as our accountants take. Um, and it has uh, 12 modules and it takes between around about eight and 10 hours. Uh, the e-learning itself uh, looks like this. It looks like a web page. It looks uh, pretty modern. And um, this isn't zero that I'm clicking on here. I'm simulating zero here. But basically, it will take you through all the fundamental use of Xero um, that you can think of. And the important thing is the employability that it brings. And it brings employability because all of our accountants have to be advisor certified. So guess what? Um, they're looking for advisor certified on people's CVs and LinkedIn's, etc. And so it's a really good employability um, tool. Um, it is assessed at the end of each uh, lesson as an assessment, uh, but it's click and drag and drop type assessments. Uh, there's an 80% pass mark, uh, but if you were to fail it, uh, then you can resit it. And there's no restrictions on uh, how many times you resit it. So that's a pack of e-learning um, called advisor certification. If you do land on here and you register, uh, then be aware that at the end here, there's also webinars and fast track assessments, which you don't need. Uh, that's really something our accountants are using. You don't need the webinar and you don't need the fast track either. Just using the e-learning is suffice, which is uh, this pack. Another thing um, working with First Intuition is if you wanted to take that further, um, then you can also use um, this uh, extra learning journey document as well. So this extra learning journey is a document which has click-through links in it. You must register for the advisor cert thing first because then it unlocks everything. Uh, but once you've registered for advisor cert, then you can, for example, click on here and say, click, uh, get pay or certified. And that's gonna take you through to the official um, zero pay or certification as well. And again, in partnership with First Intuition, uh, that certification and pack of badges um, is also free of charge too. So just back to the um, presentation, just to show you how that's working back in here. So the advisor certification then is just a click here, a landing page will take you through to that registration. And then extending the learning journey is this link here. Just click on that learning journey and it'll take you through to that document that I showed. And from there, you can click on a range of different certifications and badges on top. If you were to be super duper keen, you could take all of these and impress the hell out of the, your employer or future employer. Um, and this would take around about another 10 hours. So advisor cert is about call it 10 hours and this pack on top is around about 10 hours as well uh, but yes yeah, very very good for employability the so what is that there are uh, 18,000 students taking advisor cert and we've already seen a thousand students uh, gaining employment in either practice or in industry um, so it's a good it's a good so what and it's a really um, good thing for first intuition you know, to be able to offer you um, and in partnership, um, free of charge. Okay, so um, that's kind of the end of the, that bit. Um, if there is any uh, time for Q&A and things, then that would be marvellous. But I'll just leave you with one message, which is um, you're in a great place. 
uh, studying a great subject uh, with a great provider, uh, Kaching. Um, and uh, just do that and then uh, stop my share and I'll come back to um, Kristen. That's great. Thank you ever so much, Mike. Really, really interesting. And hopefully that's, um, that's given you some real food for thought. And the slides are uploading into the chat box at the moment. Um, I have very slow internet, but it is getting there. Um, they are uploading. So that certification and all of that additional learning is available for you to use. Um, so very grateful for that. Thank you for um, sharing that with us and enabling us to share that with all of our students and all the attendees for this session as well. Um, just a few things that I wanted to pick up on. Really, really interesting. You talked about the accountant being the most trusted advisor. That role in finance has definitely changed to what it was when I first started out in the industry. We're no longer the back office bean counter. If anyone joined my session on Monday where I talked about communication and those skills and what we need as accountants nowadays, I talked about um, kind of this role changing. We're not, we're not there processing, entering invoices, um, doing those things that we used to do. We're now very much the advisor for businesses. We're there to take that information that's produced, use those tools that are available to us. So the technology, um, the systems, and these tools that we have available for us to gather data, turn it into information for us that then as the accountant, we are able to interpret. We're able to see the patterns, identify the story, and then we need to be able to communicate that to our clients or to um, other departments within our organization. We need to be able to tell them, this is what it means. This is the story behind it. This is what it means for the future and inform those decisions that they're going to make. So I, I think it's such an important point there that, that that changing role has really put us in the position where we are giving advice to those businesses to help them be more successful into the future, to help them grow. Um, and I really liked your kind of stacked tiles that you had there of those skills that are really important. Um, so I think Amy has popped into the chat box there. We've actually got a session on data analytics tomorrow lunchtime. Um, so I have someone joining me who has a huge amount of information to share about how um, data analytics has integrated and impacted on a role in finance. Um, we also had a session on Monday, which was very much around communication, and we touched on some presentation skills. So that ability for us to be able to take that information and share it. So that was a really interesting um, sort of analysis of those skills that we now need. Um, just seeing if anyone has got any questions in the chat box. I do have a you for you. If anyone does have any questions, please pop them into the chat box. But Mike, could I ask you, what do you think the next big thing in technology in finance is going to be? How's it going to look over these coming few years? Yeah, that's um, that's a corker, but I think it's um, there's, a few, there's a few things really. One is um, all the things that we've started to see over the last three years will get faster and faster. And what I mean by that is, um, if it can be automated, it will be automated. There's nothing stopping this now. It's um, artificial intelligence is a technology that is so good, then it's only gonna get more and more um, as an enabler. So expect things to be automated even more than they are already, that's for sure. Um, but also there, there'll be some, some specific things to finance too. And what I mean by that is you may come across a term called uh, fintech. And what fintech is, is again, uh, revolutionary, which is that um, as well as things that we can imagine, like say payment gateways, and you know, you've gone to Costa and you've just zapped things with your, your credit card. Um, we're gonna be seeing some fundamental shifts. For example, there are now companies who are challenging the banks. In fact, they're called 
challenger banks, <laughs> funnily enough. Um, but these are companies actually sometimes are not even banks. And one of my favorite examples you could Google is Iwoka, uh, I-W-O-C-A. These, these fascinate me, this, this company, which I guess what they do is they're a software company, but they lend money to small businesses. And the reason why the Financial Services Authority have allowed that is that they link very, very tightly with zero, sage, into etc. So imagine if you're a florist and you want a new white van. Um, in the old days, you'd fill out a 10 page form. And that form is, of course, out of date in 10 seconds time. What Iwaka does, it, it, it interrogates the, the accounts real time. So what actually ends up happening is the relationship between the florist and the accountant changes because as far as the florist is concerned, they go to their accountant for advice on how to lend money. And then they lend money from what looks like the accountant. But actually it's the technology that's lending the money. And so accountants end up then being well, you can imagine what happens. The accountant is very, very closely knit then with the florist and the florist then gets even more um, encouraged and closer to the advice that the accountant can give. So that's just one example where fintech changes the role of the accountant um, just by enabling things, for example, like business loans. Um, another one, I think, is what's happening with the government. So. Again, the, the UK government has plainly said that they want to be the leading um, government in digital technologies. So we've seen that already with HMRC in you know, a tax office. But um, it, I think we've, we ain't seen nothing yet. I think we're going to see um, a lot more digitization of government um, uh, systems. And the HMRC is probably the, the one closest to our hearts but I think we're going to end up seeing even tighter integration with HMRC so that um, things like tax and VAT, et cetera, um, really is uh, integrated between HMRC systems and my system if I'm uh, the florist. So I think you can see a big change in that sort of side of technology as well. And the last thing I, I think is um, if there are a thousand applications today that link with zero, What's it going to be like in five years time? You know, there will be thousands of these uh, different softwares that link to the accounting system. And the days of the accounting system being seen as being <clears throat> something that only finance use are gone. They're, they're already gone. Uh, but the next thing is you won't even think about it being a finance system. It's the system. It could take us, takes care of the vast majority of all the business processes are within my farm. <clears throat> Whether it's called zero, I, I don't care. Um, if I'm the farmer, um, it's all about systemizing my business world and digitizing my business world. And we're not that far off that. It will be seamless. Um, and probably the, the, the one that I have the passion for is the 6G thing. Because I think the 6G will change um, Computing, it really is as drastic as that. Thank you. Really, uh, I mean, the next few years are exciting, aren't they, in, um, in our finance world to see. I don't think we can predict what's going to be there in 10 years time. I mean, the next few years no. is hard enough, but it's certainly um, an exciting space to be in. And I think what you said earlier as part of your presentation, where what what does this mean? It means that the people are really, really important. As accountants, what we are able to do and how we add value to support businesses in their decision making, their plans, their growth, um, being able to interpret and analyse all of this information and, um, and put that human influence into it is going to be increasingly important. Um, yeah. So, yeah, really interesting. Um, I have popped my email address in the chat box. So Catherine, I know you had a question there. If you wouldn't mind popping that to me on an email, I'll find out the answer for you and get back to you. Um, so my email address is there if anyone does have any questions or any thoughts that you would like to share. I do just have one last question to ask you if that's all right, Mike. Um, obviously the last kind of 12 to 18 months has been a very unusual time for all of us. Um, 
I'm not going to use that word that's used so frequently uh, to describe the situation, but the way in which we work, the way in which we operate has been has had a huge impact um, because of what's happened with the pandemic. How do you think the way in which we're going to work into the future has changed? What would be your perspective on that? Yeah, I think um, there are some things that are, are here to stay. You know, the new norms, as everyone keeps saying. Um, that there's definitely some some uh, things here to stay. I think, including obviously the home working. Um, I I can't see us ever going back to exactly what we, what life looked like you know, pre word we won't say. Um, <clears throat> uh, and therefore, I think. Um, some of that, uh, we've seen a massive shift in the uptake of some of these technologies and I think that will continue. I think uh, companies will carry on investing in <clears throat> remote working technologies, um, video conferencing, etc. like this, uh, you know, cloud applications. Um, but also maybe the shape of buildings will change, meaning um, how we use buildings might change a bit. Um, you know, you can never get uh, um, meeting space in buildings generally, can you? So, but um, maybe that shift towards hybrid um, home working and office working will mean uh, what's in, inside a building may, may change. Our CEO, Steve Vamos, um, says that he thinks it's an and subject. What he means by that is we will be uh, working in offices and we'll be working from home. And we don't see that ever changing now. I think that's that's stamped and, and uh, so that, that's already uh, in place. <clears throat> I think one of the interesting things about this time is if, if that happens and we do end up being you know, part in and part out of offices, um, what happens to culture? You know, what happens to how we work together? Um, as we probably all know, uh, or I certainly find out most when I'm standing at the coffee machine. You know, so what, what's the replacement to that? And, and how do you get that, uh, that team fee feeling uh, if, if we're not in the offices uh, quite so much? Um, <clears throat> we also think, uh, um, and this is a we, we also think as opposed to Michael also thinks, um, that gig economies will, uh, are here to stay. So also likely to, to explode. So, you know, I might hold down a, a job um, at work in public sector or private sector but I might sell some t-shirts on the side. I might have um, uh, a bike shop um, website on the side. I can follow my passions because the technology should enable that. Um, so I think uh, that's gonna happen a lot more too. It's there'll be people doing gig economy, gig work uh, far more than we've ever seen before too. Excellent, I think um, we have all been kind of forced to embrace technology over recent times and change our own behaviours and the way that we work. Um, for anyone who is particularly interested in that topic, we have done some um, webinars recently that have looked at hybrid working and remote working. So those can all be found, um, links to those on our hub. So through our website, we have our hub and there's a whole load of um, topics that we speak to experts, specialists and people with experience um, in the market, much like um, Mike, I'm sure you're, you've appeared on a few of those as well.